So this is where we left off when we built the uh, single cycle uh, risk five ALU, um, the CPU, sorry, the, the actual data path, the ALU is part of it. We need instruction cache, data cache, the register file, and then all of these connections allow us to make all of these different choices. The ALU can either add two registers or add a register and an immediate value. Uh, the, the value written back to the register file can be either the output of the ALU, it can be the output of memory, or it can be the updated program counter for a return address. And then we can make choices here about whether or not we're going to update the program counter with PC plus four or update it with a new target address calculated by program counter plus the immediate value. Here, the ALU is giving information about the two registers that we compare when we decide to do a branch. And I've got that arrow just sort of going off into the ether because the other thing we're missing is control information. I haven't listed all the control points how to make those choices, how to build a structure where the machine, microcode, whatever it is, can actually make this thing do the thing. The nice thing about single cycle data paths is the control logic is very, very easy. It's all single combinational logic. The instruction is identified, and then based on the opcode, these um, choices are made. A multi-cycle data path, where you might have like a single bus with lots of stuff that goes into it, or the pipeline data path we'll see in a minute, can have much more complicated control logic there are some advantages and disadvantages to both of these ways of approaching a data path construction. The reason that we did a single cycle data path for risk five is that we're now going to pipeline it. And pipelining a single cycle data path is much easier than pipelining a multi-cycle single bus machine because in a multi-cycle single bus machine, each instruction uses lots of different pieces in different configurations all the time. And the whole point of a pipeline is that each chunk of the, of the data path can be isolated. And we know that this chunk is only operating on this instruction and everything else is ignored. So that when that chunk moves to the next part of the pipeline, the first chunk can be used for a different instruction. So let's work on that. Each already, each sort of chunk of, the, of this data path is somewhat isolated, right? The instruction cache happens more or less on its own. The, um, the register file specifies information to, or sorry, the, inst the instruction register specifies information to the register file, which is more or less on its own. The ALU does its math and produces its result to these different places. All of this happens in one cycle. Now our job is to sort of break it up into pieces that can happen independently and then think about all the data that we have to sort of collect and follow to allow that to happen independently. So first thing we do is we're going to spread it out a little bit and add registers between the chunks that we think we're gonna be able to separate. So I'll show you that again. Already we've got the instruction cache isolated by two registers. We've got a program counter on one side and the instruction register on the other. And that means that this can happen in isolation. Right? Data from one register, something happens, results get stored in another register. That's our independent unit for pipelining. Now we do that for the rest. So we want another register at the other side of the register file so that we can load information from the register file in anticipation of passing that information to the ALU. It's a bit weird to have register file between two registers, but you'll see with the math and stuff that has to happen, including the uh, immediate field and some choices and stuff, this is going to be the way to do it. Then we have registers on either side of the ALU that's going to isolate that operation. Uh, the, on one side, it'll be the, the results of the register file. And then on the other side, it's going to be the results of the ALU. And then finally, we have um, some register to isolate us for write back. And when we're writing back, we're writing back into the register file. So as long as we have something that stores the address for the um, for the memory, oh yeah, the memory is another cycle that we're gonna do separate from the write back. Well, let's, let's build it out and we'll see because that memory versus write back can be a little complicated. So here's how we're gonna spread it out. Oh, and it looks like I'm colliding a little bit. This line just goes here. So we're adding registers on either side of the ALU and on the other side of the data cache. And then what we're doing is splitting the, the operation of this pipeline into five pieces, sorry, five pieces. And these are the standard five pieces that were on that um, reference sheet that I gave you. Instruction fetch, instruction decode, execute, memory access, and write back. And you can sort of see these emerging, right? Instruction fetch is here, we're pulling the instruction from the cache. Uh, instruction decode is here where we're deciding what to do and accessing the, the information from the register file. Then execute is here, 
Uh, and then the memory access is here with some register providing the address to the data cache and some register holding the result. And then write back is going to be sort of backwards. It's going to take the result from the ALU or from the data cache or whatever and write that back into the register file. So we have a uh, pipeline register that holds that information and then we're going to put that back into the register file where it's going to stay at the end of our instruction. So that's all we're doing. We're spreading things out and then we're putting registers between them so we can store information as we go. But now the question is, what's in those registers? How do we store that information? Because one of the big complications of pipelining is that if I'm, for example, doing execute, at this stage in the pipeline, some other instruction is being fetched. Some other instruction is being decoded. So this register has to hold everything has to hold the opcode, has to hold the function code, it has to hold the data that was extracted from the register file, and it has to hold information about where everything's going. So we got to take that information from the instruction register and follow it along in our pipeline, one step at a time. So let's, let's break that out a little bit next. I think that's what we're doing next. Um, Oh, no, we got to do a little bit of realignment first because there's a, there's a little complication. Because we have to follow things along, this target address calculation is not going to be accurate for the decision of whether or not to take that target. Here's what I mean. When we calculate this target address, it depends on whether we're branching or jumping. If we're jumping, it just happens. But if we're branching, it depends. it'll happen based on a choice, right? Did this branch happen or not? Are these two values equal or not? And we won't know that until the ALU finish its execution because that's where we decide whether we're taking the branch or not. So that means that in this chunk is where we want to calculate that target address. And we're going to do that based on what the ALU says about whether or not we're going to take that. So in fact, we're going to move this target address. We're going to move that over here. We're going to take this program counter, follow it along, and that also gives us that program counter um, for later on, if we need to calculate a new program counter, a new target address, we follow it along pipeline stage to pipeline stage. So that's a little realignment that we have to do, and it looks like this. I've also shifted the data cache down a little bit, as you'll see. And I've tried as much as possible to put each of these wires through one of these registers so that we can store the data in one clock cycle and retrieve it in the next. Now, there's a little bit of complication. This program counter needs to be stored here because it's got to be forwarded along. And so we have a new little chunk of register in, in addition to the instruction register. Also, this immediate value that's added to the target address, that's added through the, via the program counter. And finally, there's another little complication you'll notice that we haven't actually fixed yet, is that when we are calculating the next address that we are using as a return address, it is PC plus four. But when we calculate the new target address, we're adding that to PC. So we have to carry PC along to add it to the target address, but we have to then use PC plus four once we have decided what the next address is gonna be in here, if we're using that for our return address, right, that we're gonna store in the register file. So somewhere in here, we're gonna also have to add PC plus four. These are the kind of little funky details that as you start to build this out, you'll start to identify, oh wait, that's not gonna work. Let's move this around. That's the kind of development and design that we're hoping to achieve here. So uh, let's have a look at the next thing. So now I've added labels to each little chunk of the pipeline frame, uh, the pipeline register that will tell you what's in them. So let's go through that, right? This is the program counter, as we said. Program counter gets carried along. It's going to be carried along. And then finally, if we are storing a return address, we add four to that program counter and store it in write back. Because write back is where we store things, right? So we can store the return address in write back phase, but it has to be PC plus four. And we have to carry that PC along so we can add four to it. Now we've got a bit of duplication. We're adding four here and we're adding four here. That's a little unfortunate, but this is what happens when we pipeline. Sometimes things we used for multiple purposes have to be duplicated so they can be done for different instructions at different times. Uh, okay, so this is the register that the, the pipeline register that's going to store information after the instruction decode, right? Instruction fetch is here, instruction decode is here. We're storing S2 and S1 from the register file. We're storing the immediate value calculated by this hand wavy make the immediate value, but we're also storing lots of information from the register, uh, including 
uh, the destination register when we're writing back, the opcode itself, whatever we're actually doing, function three and actually some of function seven to decide what the ALU should do. And at each phase of the pipeline, we can peel off stuff once it's done, right? When function three is done, that's in the ALU. Maybe we don't need it anymore. Maybe we do. So we'll see how much we have to follow along. In the, uh, so this register at the end of instruction decode is the register at the beginning of execute. So we'll have a look at that. Execute happens. And then uh, after the ALU does its thing and this little target address calculation, then we have a target address, which is new, program counter, which we're following along, the ALU result, which is new, and then S2, which again, we're following along. We generated S2 here, and then we copy it through so that it's ready for storing in the data cache, should that be what we're doing. Finally, in the, um, or yeah, second to finally, in the memory f uh, stage, we have the data cache, which is addressed by the ALU result, and the result of the data cache goes into, into this memory register here. The ALU result, we're going to carry forward as well, because we might need to store that as a write back. So we have to think about all the different things we might write back. Either we write back memory or ALU or the program counter, plus four. And so all of those have to be at the end of the memory phase, so they're available for the write back phase. And then write back is from the end of memory, writing back into the register file. And so in this case, the register file is sort of the end result of that write back phase. So that's a uh, really quick and dirty construction of this pipeline. In the next video, I'm going to walk through an example of how it's going to work one phase to the next.